Welcome everyone to another episode of Tutorial Tuesday. It is week 29, 2019. I'm glad that you're along with us. I have a ton of your questions on tap already, so I'll get to the announcement first and then we'll dig right into your questions. Announcement number one. I have a photography workshop scheduled in Torrey, Utah for June 2020 next year. It'll be, uh, along with myself, it'll be co-hosted by Canon Explorer of Light, Bruce Dorn. Go ahead and swipe over to take a look at that. We're accepting 12 people into this, uh, into this class, and there's only four spots left. So if you want to sign up, go ahead, swipe over there, take a look and sign up. I do offer payment options to be more budget friendly. So take a look and let's get right into your questions now. What a great question to start out this week's Tutorial Tuesday. Um, something that I say quite often, and that is I, I love the creative aspect of photography and I, and I love what that uh, brings into my life but it pales in comparison to how I feel about being a small business owner and owning a photography business. Both my wife and I are self-employed and every day, you know, nobody forces us to get up and walk out the door and hustle that day to make a living, but we know what happens if we don't. And there's such a strong correlation, in my opinion, between being a small business owner and being a rancher. Nobody forces you out the door, but you know what happens if you don't go out the door. So yes, I, absol I absolutely do offer mentoring and I'd love to help you. And now we get the comedy relief in Tutorial Tuesdays. What am I gonna do a black and white photo workshop when you start seeing in color? No, hey, take a look at Bruce Dorn's last post. He had some great information on black and white. In my editing process, I use Adobe Photoshop and Adobe Lightroom, 100% of my images go through Lightroom, and of those, maybe 30% go on into Photoshop for some manipulation. I don't know how I can do those emojis, uh, like live in person, we'll go hands, clap hands, and then, uh, I don't know, a wink or something like that. So there you go. Do I take pictures of Western weddings? Let me post a couple and you tell me. So short answer, yes, absolutely. I take pictures of Western weddings, bridals and engagements as well. So if you're looking for that, hit me up, just send me a DM. With this being your first wedding, you're absolutely in the right spot as a second shooter. Um, follow direction from whoever the lead is and make sure you're getting what they want and they'll probably give you a list as well. Um, know up front that you're know up front that being a second shooter at a wedding, in most cases, you're gonna be in a work for hire situation. In other words, you're working for the lead photographer and you're not going to be selling your images to their clients. So know that. So just know that from the business side of things and then from uh, the more creative side, what I would be looking for in a second shooter is making sure that you cover all the details of placement, you know, the table placements, um, even the decorations and stuff like that. And finally, as a second shooter, make sure you ask questions. Get everything laid out on the table with your lead and just don't let anything fall through the cracks. Um, know what's expected of you up front. I'm gonna break in here for just a couple different things. One is I wanna draw your attention to Bruce Dorn and Sarah. Bruce has been mentoring Sarah for quite some time now and they're working on the October issue of Outdoor Photographer and the theme is new perspectives. So what we know from our time in the industry is the best that we can do is give back because if you want your legacy to live on, you can take that knowledge to the grave and nobody, is, nobody will ever know what you did. But if you can mentor someone, if you can provide the skills that you've learned over time, then your legacy lives on. So look for that in the October issue of Outdoor Photographer. You guys, the next thing that I want to talk to you about is I've heard from a handful of you now that want business mentoring, and I really appreciate that. Here's your first lesson, and this is straight off the plate. Within the last hour, I received a text message from a client saying that I completely missed the mark on creating the images uh, for them that we did. And, and while I'm not gonna sit around and wallow about it, what I am gonna do is do my best to serve my client. I need to meet and exceed their expectations. If they have not, if they did not give me that feedback, then I would completely be missing the mark. So always look for that feedback. 
That's your lesson today. The short answer is yes, absolutely. I provide these one and two day mentoring workshops. Um, we can do it one on one. And before you come down, DM me and we'll set out a custom plan for you. It's a three step process. Step number one, eat lots of paisleys right there. Eat lots of this stuff. Step number two, be a redhead. Step number three, have a bald spot. There you go. You have a couple different options. The first one is use the existing glass that you have and hopefully that's uh, glass that gets you down to at least F2.8. You'll probably need to be somewhere in the neighborhood of ISO 3200 at 1 1,000th of a second. Another option you have to reduce that ISO impact is rent a fixed lens like Canon's um, 50 millimeter F1.2 or even their 35 millimeter F1.4. Um, that would offset the higher ISOs. You know how you get over it? You take a couple shots of tequila and then you move on to the next thing. No, you don't cry baby around. The best you can do is serve your clients. And what, what I mean by that is offer them up an alternative that you both can agree on. I like this question a lot because uh, when I first heard the term uh, gel, I thought, what, what the hell is that? Um, as it turns out, it's more like just a piece of cellophane over your light. And I'll show you a couple examples. So in that engagement picture of Chase and Tina, what I did was I added a uh, red piece of cellophane to the backlight to create that pop. Now you can get them in turquoise, blue, pretty much any color under the sun. So yes, I do use them. What an absolutely fabulous question. Here's what I would tell you. Shoot what you feel and not what you see. And that goes for everybody out there. We can learn the technicalities of photography and composition and all of that. We can learn the technicalities, the technical side of photography, but what nobody can teach us is what we love to shoot. And only you can figure that out by going out there and shooting. Find out what you like. Maybe you like families, maybe you like, or maybe you even like shooting horse feet. I don't know what that is for you, but you have to find what it is that you love. And also remember this, that when your instructor starts giving criticism, when they start giving you criticism, be open to it and what I mean by that there's some people out there that that will try and beat you down in photography and tell you that um, an image is only good one way and that's just not so when your instructor gives you projects understand that they're also challenging you on not only the technical side of photography but also the creative side and the creative side is fundamentally inside of us